I was being very, you know, rebellious and naughty and whatever, getting myself in trouble. Uh, I was around about maybe about 14, 15. And Dad said, we were out hoeing the garden. Like, this is, <laughs> you know, those electric hose, like, you know, you know basically sort of things that goes around like this, it tills the garden or electric tiller, whatever you want to call it. But we used to call it electric hose, right? Um, so, you know, you pull on the uh, uh, machine, um, like it's like a lawnmower, you know, motor to get rah, rah, and we borrowed it. I think my dad might have hired it. And so we're there uh, making a garden at the back of a house. I know exactly which house where we live in the Bay of Islands. And it's there. And it's like a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. And dad's like, listen, you know, everybody out there in the world is going to see you differently because, uh, you know, because of the way you look. And they're going to look at everybody else just like you. And they'll see this horrible you know this person is always getting in trouble uh he's not there's no same thing you know because you're like always causing mischief you're always doing this you know you're playing up and they'll see you and you kind of they'll see you as a representation of your people right uh of you know because my dad's you know european and i'm he's my stepdad but he's an amazing man right he just turned 85 a couple of weeks ago and like and he's you know He's trying to tell someone who's not biologically his child in a way that, you know, because it's like trying not to be in too harsh, but he's just saying, son, they're not going to see you. They're going to see you differently right here, right now. I'm going to tell you the truth. Like people, the world is going to see you differently because you, there aren't that many of you living here right now, right? Not that many Indians here right now. So as a young, especially your age, as a young teenager, they won't understand that not you know you're just you right they don't want to see you as an individual they're going to see you as a representation of your entire race right and so you can't be out here doing this sort of stuff and so i was like at that time i really didn't understand i'm just you know 14 14 15 so i'm just hanging out with everybody i was doing all all the crazy stuff and all my friends were rebellious and naughty teenagers right so I kind of feel like a lot of, uh, I, I know it's kind of like said to be painted that way, uh, you know, with the same brush, everybody getting painted by the same brush. But I feel like all of us need to be told that at a very young age. And I feel like um, a lot of, kid, of people are not being taught that at a young age, you know, and it's kind of um, because dad's not in the home anymore, right? And because their dads aren't in the home anymore and a lot of dads has left their families and gone off and mums have to pick up the rate uh, um you know lead and sort of you know pick up being both being a parent and um, i mean father and mother and the the words that a dad would tell its kid and the boy especially the boy, male right would understand isn't there so i uh, so i'm really grateful for my dad for what he's told me at a young age and it took me years, but I really, I started understanding when I became, you know, I guess in my 20s when I realized that, yeah, you can't just go behaving like this as a migrant in a predominantly another country, you know, and you're going to kind of like representing yourself or your entire, you know, ethnic minority group, whatever, you know, because you're the only one that they see right here, right now, until years later where the whole place, everybody is like so diverse now in every country you go to. Whereas when I was living, uh, when I moved here in the 80s, I was like the only male uh, seven-year-old up to about 14-year-old in my entire town, almost my entire area, in my you know, rural area that we lived in. And so dad was like, just remember, these guys are going to see you as a stereotype representation of everybody, of your race. And so I want to play this little video here from this guy about being, you know, being over these in a country you know well, let me just blow up this into a higher res so you guys can see that because it's like really low there there we go because i don't want him looking good so i'm um, looking bad sorry you should say so this is francois mark he's in korea right he's studying in korea sounds sounds like a really cool guy very um and i saw this come across randomly because i was looking after this dude here um, and you know that's the video we've been watching while I've been trying to set up this stream properly after so many months, and so because of that, his stream popped up, and I was like, oh, you know, his video popped up, 
So, so let's check it out. You know, you know I've been living, living in Seoul, South, South Korea, Korea for 12, 12 years, years, and I've been living in Korea altogether for about 14 years, and I've seen some crazy stuff since I've been here. I've had the honor of going to a lot of weddings in this country. I've traveled around to so many different amazing places, and I've tasted a lot of amazing food with a lot of amazing people. And because I've had so many positive experiences, so many wonderful experiences here in Korea, I have nothing but positive things to say about this country. All of you know how I feel about Korea. This is my home. However, these days I feel like my country, my home, I don't want to say my country, but my home is under attack. And that's because of this person named Johnny Somali. Let's talk about him and let's talk about how he's dangerous for Korea, but also for foreigners living here. Honestly, I never knew anything about Johnny Somali until you know a week ago when a few of my uh, YouTube subscribers left comments saying how I should be careful because Johnny Somali is running rampant in this country. One of my subscribers even said, for me to be careful because I look like Johnny Somali. So I had to do a quick Google search to find out who this guy is. Who is Johnny Somali? Why is he causing like all of this uproar? And why are people comparing Johnny Somali to me? <laughs> so it did not take me long to find some of the like worst atrocities that I've ever seen committed in Korea by foreigners who are visiting this country. He should be uh, kicked out of Korea as soon as possible like i was watching some of his videos and he's doing some very dumb things like i can't fathom why a person would actually do these things in a foreign country but also why would you even think about doing these things in general it doesn't make any kind of sense and so there's one video of johnny somali he's sitting in a convenience store and he's eating uh ramen or he's eating some kind of food and he's being very disrespectful to the older woman who's working uh, at the at the convenience store like what kind of person would, would think about doing something like this? And how does he have so many followers? How does he have so many subscribers and so many views? I mean, that's also very mind-boggling. One of the funny things... One of the things that's come out is that he's a very... Uh, like Johnny's... Not this gentleman here, not Francois, but Johnny Som Som Somali, right? That's not his, his actual real name. His name is Ishmael something, right? He's a Muslim. It's come out that he's very racist towards Asians. And the, so the people who are actually, you know, um, who actually have followed his stream for a while understand that, that he's a racist person, right? And um, and so they but egg him on towards being racist towards Asians, uh, specifically to anybody who's not, you know, part of his race, right? So anybody who's a racist, um, you know, and in that sort of arena, uh, or whatever have you in that grouping they're the ones who are funding this sort of stuff right uh, and that's who they're the ones who are following right uh that nuisance a tribe uh new nuisance streamer tribe right and like francois says right like he can't fathom i can't fathom as a human being of doing that sort of thing because it's not in us to do that we are raised right as a, you know as people like to say you know we have a dad in the home we have someone who's disciplining us saying that's not how you behave son right so he it's like he has he's able i don't even know how he was able to get a passport right because i don't have a passport my passport's expired i can't be bothered getting a passport because it costs like 280 dollars to get a passport right so I, I i don't need to travel and stuff but yet he's able to get all this money because there's somebody out there actually funding this sort of thing to go out there abuse asian people to abuse overseas people as a foreigner but like like francois says right it's dangerous to foreigners now to be in asia because of this person and what he actually means is dangerous for dark-skinned people to be in asian countries now right because a lot of people who are seeing who are doing you know they know it's not white people doing that right it's not european people doing this it's actually this black dude doing this and so francois now feels like his he's getting warned by his friends his korean friends right his asian friends saying hey be careful dude because they're going to see paint you with the same brush just like i was saying earlier right that you're going you know uh, when you're when you're out there doing stuff like this uh, as a so-called minority in a wider asian country you're easily you will become targeted as Sala as johnny salami right 
um, Somali, right? And so you'll basically be seen as this horrible person, and that brings a, a danger to you. And I kind of wonder, like, you know, I mean, there are racists around everywhere, right? And then if you have a racist person actually out there doing these sort of racist things, people will think that you're all racist because the stereotypes are based on something. That's why it's called a stereotype. A certain group of people doing certain things becomes a, a stereotype of that group. Now, um, let me put on, first of all, a bit more. Thing is, is that Johnny, Johnny Somali, Somali would be considered, considered black, black American, or, or even, even some, some people would say he's African American. So all of his derelict behavior, it kind of brushes off on the African Americans or black Americans or even black people, Africans, however you want to call yourself here in Korea. Okay, okay, okay. That can be a little far-fetched. Maybe just because Johnny Somali is acting like a, like a child, he's acting like he's crazy, he has no sense. It doesn't mean that, you know, because of the color of his skin, everyone is going to associate his behavior with other like, not light skinned, like skinned people. <laughs> and even though I'm not happy with Johnny Somali and his antics here in my beloved Korea, this does afford me the opportunity to talk about some different cultural skills that people should have when they're traveling or visiting another country. I'm not sure if I've talked about this in another video or not, but I'm very, I'm very disturbed with how a lot of YouTubers go around to different countries and they act a fool. And this can have terrible, dire consequences on all foreigners who visit or travel around to different countries. But more specifically, I want to talk about like African Americans and the black community. Why Johnny Somali's antics, why his, his derelict behavior can bode even worse for us. I think I have a bit of self-awareness. I think and I think I'm pretty good at reading the room. So here's the thing, right? So look at the skin, right? Same colors from Swa, and he's black, um, black American, right? African American, what do you want to call it? So that means that if I go to Korea, right, people will see me just as an American, and that's not that's not some that's not strange to say because I. <laughs> my actual uh, friend, Korean friend, said to me, "What's your what's with your accent? You're American, right?" I said, "No, no." He goes, "Oh, well, how come you sound American?" It's like, you know, and I could easily pass, and I have passed as an American before because, and I had to correct people because I grew up watching American TV from a young age, like seven, eight years old, right? So that meant that like a lot of my this is when you're learning, when you're at the young age, you're learning. You know english your accents and so when you're hearing american all the time i just take that on board because you know everybody's you know most most of my time spent on front of the tv you know as a kid as you do and so my my tone my accent isn't actually new zealand because we have a very different style and so a lot of times people who don't know me think that i'm american because of my accent because i don't sound kiwi I was mistaken for American in Fiji, in, in the country that I was born in, amongst my own people, right? And then I got, I got, got, um, you know, got um, confused as an American here by the locals because I went to another town. So, oh, okay. So, where you, what part of America are you from? Like, um, I'm not from America. I'm from here, and I'm from Fiji originally. So they yeah, was like, oh, you you sound American. So yeah, and Francois is right. You know, like it's it paints uh, it it paints foreigners in the bad light when you have foreigners. Uh, you know, it gives that whole ugly American thing that kind of thing. Um, and same same as that. Like I mean, like there was a Amer um, there was a few years back in New Zealand, there was like this family of English British family who were doing pretty much the same thing. And that sort of like caused people in New Zealand to go, hey, listen, we don't want the sort of people here. Right. So if you, the moment you start causing trouble, we'll, you know, we'll give you a warning and we'll deport you, put you on a plane and get the hell out again. Uh, because, you know, we don't want that sort of tourist. Nobody, you know, even though tourism is a big, good, big thing because we need that tourist money, right? Every time, you know, people come over, they're not going to spend two, three dollars like a local would go to an event, um, you know, to a place. 
go spend 10, 30, 30, 40, 50 dollars when you go to, you know, say a zoo or something, they want memorabilia. And so tourism is important to a country. And so when he's doing all these things over at Asian countries, they're trying to be polite about it. They're not trying to be too aggressive towards them because they don't they don't want that tourists, you know, to give that good relationship with the outside public. They don't want to paint everybody in the same light. And Francois is right. If you're a foreigner visiting, uh, you know, another country, you got to really be on good behavior because you're representing your entire country because some people there have never met a person from America or person from New Zealand or per person from Australia. So if you're over there, um, say an Asian country, especially in this situation, and you're behaving like that, that's basically creating a stereotype to these people of your culture, of you as of, of that, from that, that country. And, um, and, you know, to be to a point where your friend, your Korean friends come and tell you, hey, dude, you look like that dude. So be careful because we know you're a good person. Strangers don't know that. And right now there's a guy out there that looks like you is making all these horrible, horrible live stream videos, attacking people, harassing people, uh, you know, disrespecting our, uh, our war memorials because that's what he was doing. Uh, you know, disrespecting a war memorial. Right. And um and just you know being atrocious towards our local girls like this being on the street saying i want to do this to you let me do this to you you know in an aggressive sexual way and so now you've got a, a a black american doing that in asia now you've got francois who's uh, studying there who's of course korea his home right south korea's home is now being painted with the same brush hey when they see you they'll see you like that first they don't see you like the nice gentleman person that you are and so it is important to you know uh, if you're a migrant to be on your best behavior to a certain extent because you you are representing your people you are representing your family your culture you basically your identity because a lot of people don't and have never met someone like you ever before and so it's good to kind of try to be on your best behavior be a polite person be a kind person you know whatever you need to do just represent uh, understand that you are the first person they see you know it's like that's why they, what is it like the, the something about the the first impression is the best impression or whatever like that's the pressure you know that everybody ever has of you so you know for me you know i i um i think that a lot of migrants tend to just think that they can do whatever they want wherever they are and say whatever they want without actually understanding that the country they're in has their own culture and you got to respect that culture and you know and i that's why i don't like uh, people who don't assimilate i really do not like foreigners who do not assimilate into a local community right uh, who they just want to stick up stick them down little huddle groups you know and create their own little villages you know and that's where they stay because everybody speaks the same language they eat the same food they dress the same way and the next thing you know they become like oh that's them and this is us and there's no assimilation there and so as a migrant you can't live like that in a foreign country because hey you went there because you want to be there right you chose to be there like our family chose to be in new zealand my mom chose to be here right and have you know have children here right we were you know we chose to be here right so we could you know and then if if we start behaving badly it's like the country can choose to chuck us out right because and i think a lot of times um especially minority people always feel like they have like some sort of power because they're like oh we're the minority you know whatever we can do we can get away with because hey we're the minority and i think that's that's a horrible way to live in a foreign country you know i mean it's got to be a bit of a, a give and take right you got to mix in you can't just keep in your own little areas and expect that you know the community should help you you got to help and be part of the community you know because and, uh, and the other uh, side of that is that you don't you shouldn't as a you know as a migrant try to influence the community you know and that's the last thing you want to do because you are the you are the newcomer right they're already established you got to assimilate to them not the other way around and i think a lot of times the court problems of course is when uh you know the newcomers try to change where they're coming into and i've watched that i watched foreigners in new zealand come in and get into groups to try to change it i'm like 
that's established group that have the special protocols they have that culture you can't just go in and try to change it now you see that a lot in gaming that's why a lot of gaming groups are broken up people coming in oh you have to do it this way you got to change it you came in here because of what we were like you can't then try to change it you know so i think that's something everybody has to take note of especially migrants man i think you know um there's a because this is a whole quote unquote whatever power of the minority right the falsehood of that people think that like yeah minorities have all the answers they don't right they do not and a lot of times they can do a lot of damage to groups and cultures around them because of the way they behave and um and that sort of gives the locals a stereotype of that culture and then they will if they you know if the if that minority group doesn't call out that bad actor then everybody will see that that minority that minority group as like that person as endorsement so that's why like when i see something that my you know if i see someone from my culture doing something bad i'll call it out i'll go yeah that's not good because i know that those basically silence is in and to people you know if you really understand people's nature so if you're silent against something that's basically endorsement so if you don't call out stuff that you see that is bad that's done by your own people then that's basically everybody else is an endorsement even whether you like it or not even if it's wrong you know people will still see that as an endorsement right ignorance is people understand ignorance isn't bliss anymore right you can't just let be bad actors uh don't you know degrade your community by the way they behave and i understand rebellion i understand teen angst and all that stuff but you know and people understand that as well as a teenager people will excuse your behavior because hey you're a teenager and stuff but when you're over 20 and do that that's when you people go yeah now you're an adult now you face the law you face the community's law right it's like that you know like they say like, you know it takes a village to raise a child because after that child is and now it belongs to the village and the village will now deal with you so let's carry on with um listen to uh francois i'm gonna mute myself because i haven't got my headphones because i was testing out this new mic so apologies for that my surroundings and understand how people perceive me or perceive like different situations when i hear about johnny somali coming to uh, korea and he's you know he's defaming everything that he does and he's just making He's making Americans look bad. He's making foreigners look bad in the eyes of Korean Koreans. But he's also making you know, uh, you know African descent people uh, look bad as well. And maybe a lot of you will say, "Oh, Francois, you know we know the difference between you know each individual." But I mean, seriously, sometimes people don't know the difference, and one person can can create a stereotype or add to the stereotype of an entire group of people. Like there's one instance that really comes to mind and it just makes me stop and think and just recall like my, my feelings like i had very strong feelings about this incident and a lot of my friends who were with me they didn't really seem to mind but for me because i think i have some kind of cultural awareness or just awareness in general it just it stuck out and that was when i was in busan and it was about i don't know six or seven years ago so down in busan i went to mcdonald's with a couple of my friends a few of my friends and inside there was just there's a lot of people there were like tons of people because it was the fourth of july weekend so uh many of you know that here in korea there are a lot of u.s military personnel so on that day on the holiday uh all of the u.s personnel military personnel they were out and they were just partying and having fun in mcdonald's there were tons of people and the grand vast majority of those people were african americans and usually i would be like very happy and enthusiastic about seeing you know people who look like me you know self-identity uh or self-identification theory something like that you know whenever you see people who look like you uh you tend to gravitate toward them or you know feel more accepted uh around them but in this case it was the complete opposite so let me paint the, the scene for you behind the counter there are korean workers and there are korean people who are buying uh, food there are just like maybe a few koreans in there maybe five or six but then there are like maybe 
uh, you know, 10 or 12 African Americans. And then more Koreans started to come in and some of the African Americans started to leave. There remained like five, four or five African Americans. I remember, remember there were like three girls and two guys. And the girls were so loud. They were like super, super loud. And they were just using like the N-word, like constantly, like N-word this, N-word that. And I'm a big proponent of never using this word. It's not cool. It's not fun to use this word uh, in music or just even as a term of endearment. I think this word should be eradicated from from you know, anyone's vocabulary. The African-American group, they were like screaming and yelling or speaking so loud using the N-word, N-word this, N-word that, N-word this, N-word that. And Koreans were just looking at them, just not saying anything, just looking at them. And when the Koreans were looking at them with like, eyes of like bewilderment and just like you know exasperation like what is going on it just it made me feel it made me feel bad because i'm also african-american and i can never escape like my people i can't escape you know uh, coming from where i come from or you know being who i am so it just it made me feel bad to see the koreans witnessing how you know we as a people were acting on that particular night. Yeah, so, I mean, think about that. If you see a bunch of African-Americans or... Yeah, so... I, I blame all that on the rap music, 100%. The use of the N-word... Like, if rap music stopped using it, because culture is affected by music and art, right? Uh, so if, if, if hip-hop people stop using it, as normalized that language and music everybody else would stop using it. you know how i know that because people call each other nigger in fiji but they've never met any black americans how do they do that because they listen to that music right how do people in new zealand call each other that especially young oh uh, especially maori people dark-skinned people right why? Because, well, rap music, because that's what they listen to. So they call, yo, nigga this, nigga that, to everybody else, or all their friends. Hey, I got called that this week, right? Because why? I'm just walking down the street, right? And so why? Oh, music. And so I, I hate rap music that uses that. I love the old school rap music, man. I seriously love the old school rap music because it had respect and they were doing something positive with it with that music and even if it was just dancing you know just for the hell of dancing the clubs i enjoy that right dallas soul you know truck or quest all that stuff is amazing even public enemy right but guess what when nwa got popular with the uh, niggas with the attitude thing that's when it went all downhill that's when they started pushing that in the mainstream and that's when they realized they could money make money of people listening to black people calling each other nigger all day long. And so they got on that. See, this is the most I've ever said that in <laughs> the, the nigger word, right? Ever in an entire y decade, because I'm trying to make a point here, right? Because I don't use that in my vocabulary. I hate that because I don't want to be called that. And I got called that this week out of the blue, just minding my own business walking down the street why because rap music rap music is what is what is bringing around the street culture the drug culture from america's ghettos into the world into every uh you know every music store you know every video that plays hip-hop right every station that plays it you know all around the world you can hear it in Korea, you can hear it in Japan, anywhere. But here's the thing, it's so hypocritical because when you sing along to that, oh, now you're being racist. So I, I put that blame on black people and black musicians especially. And I agree with him, so I'm like him because I understand what that does, right? It, it's open season for the rest of the world to use that word. Because if you're out there going on one hand going, oh, we don't say, you can't say that, then why are you saying it? Right? Why are you saying it all day long, 50 times in your freaking song, right? 
I, I, that's why I think it's like it's the most hypocritical thing to say you can't use the N word. Why? You're using it. Right? So if you don't want us to use it, so stop using it. If you don't want somebody in South Africa using it or someone in Fiji using it, someone that's far removed, that's never met an American in their entire life, especially a black American or African American, whatever you want to call it, right? In their entire life, yet they're using it because that's the music that's being played on the stereo, on the freaking radio station, because that's what's popular right now. That's because of you. Not because of that Indian dude in Fiji calling each other nigger, right? That's because of you in America creating that music for no reason, because you don't, you can use it, you can put anything else in there, but because you chose to use that because, hey, we want to own this, right? If nobody, you're not owning that word. Everybody else in the world is owning it to describe you, to describe each other, describe every dark skinned person in the world. So you're basically perpetuating racism through your music towards other dark skinned people. You are exporting racism because of hip hop, because of rap music, right? That's why people call it rap crap, because it is, when you do that, it is crappy to do that, use, uh, um, you know, put that word out there internationally, not just in America to your ghettos, but to everybody around the world, right? And, not, and people understand that. Normal human beings understand how language works. That's why they don't want to use certain languages. That's why we don't want to use certain languages because we know when you keep saying something, it becomes part of the vocabulary in the community. However, it seems like black Americans in, think they're getting empowered by that silly word, right? A word that doesn't, isn't even African. It's actually white, European, right? Describing black, right? Why can't you say black? Oh no, but we gotta own that word, right? We gotta use the N word. Because there's it, because there's a there's a meaning behind that word. But it, there's no meaning in that word in your music. You're just saying it randomly because you can't come up with anything else interesting. Right? That's why I gave up listening to hip hop music years ago. Like, you know, because like like I said, in the nineties I love Charcoal Quest, I love Public Enemy, Adela Soul, there were so many others, Salt and Pepper and all that. There were so many cool bands out where are they now because they promote uh, you know gangster rap over all that good positive music all that you know stuff you could just put on nobody would care it'd be like they'll sing along with it because there's no n-word in there right and you could still have booty seeking music and dance things but it didn't have that in there right but now that's the big thing and so like Fancho was saying right you, you're out there saying it to each other and everybody's looking like, like why are you guys being racist to each other why are you using a racist word yeah and i think it's it's interesting how people it's like it's it's kind of it's ignorance among themselves you know it's like when you like for instance when you leave that community and you're outside the community then you can look at that community from the outside and go hey yeah i know i see how that can be detrimental to yourself to our own community by using that right um it's just a lot of people just don't want they're like oh but if you say that, that you're racist yeah but you are being racist we can't call that out oh no no you can't why well it, it's it's our word so like, why is it your word when you're saying it everywhere else and so on freaking everybody else's radio station and it's being exported as a normal thing so why can't we say it oh because it's racist to us are you stupid then don't say it then. Why are you allowed to say something that we can't say? Well, you can't just can't say. There's so much, so much ignorance in that community, uh, you know, especially on the music scene. It's like, if you don't want somebody to use it, then don't say the word. Like we know there's words that we were used to call that we won't allow, we won't even use ourselves because we know the moment we say this, it'll be in somebody's head. And somewhere accidentally, even when they're not meaning to, it'll pop out. That's why we don't say it amongst ourselves. Right, that's why white people don't say it. It's only the ignorant, uh, low educated people who say certain words, right? That normal people won't say because it may, if they understand that, hey, we don't use these words against each other because that's what those other people call us, right? Because then we don't want that in the in the in the public forum, right? You know, uh, we don't talk about certain things because 
we don't want other people to be aware of those, right? And because then they would say it again. And then we'll have to deal with it again. And we'd have to shut them down. And then we'll be like the hypocrites we are, right? And then it'll be like, well, you say it. So why can't we say it? Oh, we'll tell it. It's a word. Then don't say it. And we'll, nobody else will say it. But anyway, let's get back to that. I don't want to rant too much on that. Let's, let's, Francois. Are people of any uh, uh, ethnic background, Chinese or Koreans or, you know, uh, Japanese or Europeans, anyone, if you see them just acting a fool and like running amok, like, what would you think? Would you think like these people are cool, approachable, nice, uh, you know, amicable um, or is it amiable? One of those. I always get those two words confused. <laughs> but would you think that these people uh, are well-behaved individuals and deserve to be in your country? Or would you try to steer clear of them, you know, and make sure that you have nothing to do with them? Oh, hi. Good to see you. <laughs> That's the the uh best part of filming a youtube video on campus is like all of your students are looking at you like yo what is he doing <laughs> yeah so this whole situation with johnny somalia has me thinking about all of these things like first of all you know he's american here and he's a guest in this country and he's also considered you know black american so you know his actions what kind of uh, repercussions are they going to have on other african americans or people of african descent here in this country i mean of course i'm not jenny somalia and a lot of other african americans or people of african descent living and working in korea have no connection to him no relation to him at all but already commenters are telling me to be careful because i look like johnny somalia or maybe i resemble him or he resembles me but anyways um you know connections are already starting to be made so i think johnny somali's situation can actually teach us a lot about what was the big dog over there uh, his situation can teach us a lot about cultural awareness and just having decent common courtesy and etiquette i mean that goes a long way common courtesy and etiquette yo dog have some common courtesy and etiquette i'm filming <laughs> Yo, this guy is not happy. Oh, I pointed the camera at him and he walked away. <laughs> yeah, so like also in a couple of Johnny Somali's videos, he started to be like attacked and beaten up by Koreans. And I don't condone violence of any sort unless it's in self-defense. I can kind of understand. I can empathize a lot with the Koreans who are attacking him because this guy is, is crazy. He's doing a lot of terrible things here in Korea. He's causing not only harm for Koreans, but he's also causing harm for foreigners as well. And he's causing harm for himself and his friend who's going around filming with him. My grandma always taught me when I was growing up, Francois, treat others the way you want to be treated. And if you ever go anywhere, always be respectful. You should be more respectful of places Whoa. when... Well, hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Oh, I can't put you on camera, you're children. Uh, bye. Bye. Peace see you. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> see you. I, I didn't really hear what he said, but yeah, it was two little children. They they wanted to be on the camera, and I was like, "Nah, your children." <laughs> wait, wait. Did they see how I'm, I'm handsome? If so, then yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should put them on camera. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, um, Grandma always taught me, you know, be respectful wherever you go. Actually, you should be more respectful in a place uh, that you're visiting than you should be at home. And that's not saying that you should treat your home like shit or you should like, you know, have degenerate behavior, uh, you know, at your home. But if you're going to a different place, you should show more decorum and more like uh congeniality maybe uh you just show more more of your good side more of your positive side than you should your negative side because you never know how your image the image that you portray will be perceived by people who are looking at you and then they can in turn take the image that they have of you and generalize it to other people who look like you you know i always like this traffic scene that's a good point to end this um, video one because um you know that's what i was right at the start that's what i was talking about my dad saying the thing so ending you know basically the same thing right so ending with francois grandma telling him that same thing is a good way to end that video so um thank you for joining me this wasn't supposed to be a long stream but i, I did want to co um, cover the johnny salami thing uh, somali thing because it's worldwide now right people like worldwide 
and that's going to affect how people stream in public in those countries i know there's laws over and um, being changed over in japan because of them and of course it's going to happen in korea as well but it's going to affect a lot of very good streamers right i mean people make a living off streaming right i was watching a guy drive around for six hours the other night from korea and there was like a thousand sixteen hundred people in the stream sixteen hundred just watching a guy drive around right um and um and people you know chucking in you know like a couple bucks ten dollars every now and then so paying for his petrol paying for him driving around talking bothering nobody but because of johnny salami doing these things now it's going to affect live streamers who are who do that as a job do that as a thing do that as a uh to bolster their community to communicate with people but that's all i want to say about that today i'll be catch you guys later be well be safe wherever you are